congregation, please stand for our procession hymn, hymn number 47.
The first reading is from Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we will read Psalm 1, beginning and ending with the refrain, Happy are they whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and then they meditate on this law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Happy are they who delight in the law of the Lord. second reading is from the book of Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for our gospel hymn, hymn number 172.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Pharisees, <clears throat> excuse me, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Set at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you, O Lord. The greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many times have we heard of these commandments? Many times. How many times do we obey these commandments? Love my neighbor as myself? Well, how is it that we are to love our neighbor as ourself? If we are to love our neighbor as ourself, can you see where some of the problems may lie in fulfilling that commandment? We live in a world that is self-centered. It's all about me. It's all about me all the time. I must be first. I must be best. I must excel. I must get ahead of you in traffic because I must get to where I'm going and you are in my way. Oh, and by the way, do you not love it when the guy who had to pass you is right next to you at the traffic light? How many of you, come on, own up. Own up to feeling some joy of seeing this person still having to wait. I do restrain myself from beeping my horn and waving, primarily because I think he may have a gun and shoot me. But sorry, I digress. We live in a world that's all about me. So how on this earth are we to love our neighbor as oneself? And what about the people who do not love themselves? How can they give what they don't have? God wants us to love oneself, but if you don't have it, how can you give it? The people who do not love themselves are perhaps the ones where all the anger and rage in our world is coming from. They care little about themselves and therefore care little about anyone else. Could that be the reason Jesus had so many encounters with the Pharisees and Sadducees? Weren't they all about themselves and the power that they had over the people? Weren't they the ones to tell everyone what to do and when to do it under the guise of it's in the Torah? When in reality, they were changing and controlling to get their power and status among the people. Then along comes Jesus, 
who shows its followers how to love, especially the downtrodden, the castoffs, the misfits. These people weren't like Jesus, yet Jesus chose them to show his followers that love is the answer in all things. If we receive God's love, we are able to freely give it away. That is the lesson that Jesus was teaching. And how did Jesus teach these things? Through his acts of faith, hope, and charity. Jesus did not keep his gifts to himself. He shared himself to all, even those no one wanted to have anything to do with, like the tax collectors, the unclean, and others. Jesus was always humble. He never quarreled. He stated facts, not fiction. He taught us by example, not by self-centeredness. Faith, hope, and charity are three of our seven virtues, along with prudence, justice, temperance, and courage. Faith is our heritage going back to Abraham, who was led with Sarah into the wilderness, always assured by God there was a plan, and that his descendants would be like the stars of heaven. Faith is a great part of Jesus' ministry. Jesus teaches us to have faith that our Father's will be done, just as Christ himself did as he underwent the agony of the garden on the night of his betrayal. Faith is that God is at work behind the headlines, in the streets and the desolate places, bringing about a plan of salvation. Faith that all of us have a part in that plan. Faith that one day there will be no more crying or weeping, but shouts of joy at the coming into heavenly kingdom. Hope works in our lives, not because of what we do, but by the work of the Holy Spirit. A close ally of faith, hope puts us in a place of anticipation. Hope gives us our morning resolve to arise and get going because it's God's day and there will be something of beauty and wonder for all of us in it. Charity is an act of love. Charity always has enough for others. It's what creates miracles when people in a church decide to do something for others and find themselves filled with an abundance of grace for that ministry. Yes, even like the ministries we have here at St. Mary's, saving prescription bottles and the like, we are placing others before us by remembering the needs of others. Do we practice these virtues, or do we continue to remain self-centered, not believing that God has a plan for all the misfortune we are experiencing, especially this year? The fires, the virus, fights for equality, the political unrest, the weather patterns causing strange occurrences, how could God be behind all of this? How could all of this be God's plan? Reading the Old Testament should give us a clue. There were famines. God's people were lost for 40 years. There was sickness and deaths. Thousands were killed during wars. There was a major flood that wiped out the world as it was known. Yet through it all, dry land, was finally found, and life became a new normal. Political unrest has been in history since the beginning of time. Nothing in 2020 is truly new except the names and the players. And believing as we do that God has a plan for all that happens, in our gospel we are told to love our neighbor as ourselves. If we believe who can and do love God? How can we not have faith in what God is doing? Who could love God and not have hope that God's plan of salvation is being worked out daily and that we have a part in it? Who could love their neighbor and not feel the charity in our relationships with others when, whom we are sent to serve? Ubuntu is an African word that means I am because we are. We are part of each other because we were made in the image of God regardless of our gender, ethnicity, or anything that could seem to be different about us. 
We are all created in community to be in relationship with God. We all eat, drink, and do human habits the same. We all get dressed the same way. Well, maybe not in the same kind of clothes or wear our hair the same, but actually have the same behavior that all humans have. Think about it. Think about when human babies are born. Are they not born the same way and start their humanness in the same way, regardless of what color skin they may have? Babies cry, need diapers, and want to be fed. If babies from any culture grow in the same way, when and how does the thinking change? We are taught to change. We are taught to not care about others. We are taught to hate. Those seeds are planted by words and actions we hear over and over during the course of our lives from many sources. This, as we know, is not the way of Jesus. Jesus treated all he encountered with love and humility and showed us we can love our enemies. Do we try to conform others to think the way we think? Or do we allow them to be who they are? Could we be more respectful, patient, kind, not arrogant or rude? Could we allow others to be who they are? We may not agree with each other, but that is the way God intended us to be. Can we ask our Father to open our eyes to see everyone in our community, regardless of skin color? Can we ask our Father to increase our hearing, to listen to each other, and to be respectful to each other? Open our hearts to respect everyone in our community. Help us, Father, to love others as we love ourselves. Amen. Amen. Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. 
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray especially for the people on our prayer list and for those have compassion for those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray today in remembrance of Betty Jean Tucker, Efren King Burgos, Gerald Wingate, Roma Carney, Ed Cross, Norman James, C.J. Gully, Judy Keeler, Ray Hahn. Are there others? Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Confession is on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service booklet. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought hurt and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Keeping your social distance, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I talked to one of my granddaughters last night. And we talked about Christmas coming up in, in two months. And her big concern is she usually comes here Christmas Eve uh, for the 11 o'clock service, and she's planning on doing that. She said, how do you pass the peace, you know, when you can't go over and hug somebody? Well, we are there spiritually. We know that we're separated uh, right now, but the peace is going out of each and every one of us. As Deacon Dottie was pointing out, it's the love that we have within each and every one of us. So we pass that peace to each and every one. Uh, again, as a reminder, on uh, November 15th, bring back your UTO offering. We will have a blessing of all the uh, little books uh, that we might have. What you might want to do, uh, and suggested, since it's a problem perhaps in counting change, count the change that you've got in your box, take the change out, put a check inside, and that way, again, we'll still have the blessing of the boxes, but we'll also have uh, just a check as opposed to having to take the change to the, to the bank and get it counted. Uh, I mentioned last week the idea of annual meeting coming up on the 15th as well. We're going to do it right after service. Um, anyone that has committee reports, please make sure that you get them to Grizel uh, and or Jean uh, so that we get that done. We also need two members uh, for the vestry, so if anyone is interested in serving on this vestry, again, please let Jean or myself know so that we can get your name on the ballot uh, for vestry. Uh, we will have on the 21st the diocesan convention in, Del in uh, Dover, excuse me, in Wilmington, but it is going to be done uh, virtually. So anyone that would like to uh, be bored out of their skin, 
on Saturday the 21st, <clears throat> please log in to the website and watch the diocesan convention online. It's one day, Saturday starts at 9 o'clock. Tom Brace and Grizel will be your delegates at the convention. Deacon Dottie and I will also be logging in as your clergy. Uh, but that will be held on the 21st. <coughs> in reference to the annual meeting, we also mentioned last week that we would like you to fill out a pledge card. We're not going to come hound you because you filled out a pledge card. With this pandemic as it has been, we're trying to develop our budget for 2021. And to do that, we, we need to get an idea of what our giving is going to be. So if you don't have a pledge card, please see Maureen. Um, put it in the uh, offering uh, plate. It's in the back. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, as you go out dropping it, what have I said? That check for $1,000. So as you go out, you know, please drop your pledge card in the offering uh, plate, if you would. That gives us an ability to try to work up our budget for 2021. We'd all like to get back into a normal uh, routine. None of us know what normal is. Normal is changing. The new normal is going to be something that we're all going to have to get used to. But in that respect, uh, we do have to continue doing the work of the church uh, and for God's kingdom. And for that, we need to get a general idea of what our income is going to be. So please put that into the offering plate. Uh, are there any other announcements? Deacon Dottie. Um, the UTO checks, if you are writing a check, please make the checks out to St. Mary's and on the memo line put UTO so that, because Maureen then takes one check and sends that off to the diocese, okay? Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Gale. Yeah, I'd just like to tell everybody how much I'm going to miss you for the next five months, including Father Paul. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. I really do. We're all coming with you. The paper's not that big. <laughs> well, enjoy your time in Florida and, and enjoy the weather. Uh, the forecast that I saw on for Noah for this coming year says that it's going to be a relatively mild winter. Hope oh, spring eternal. Uh, yes, Elaine. Uh, Grizel and Bill were over the other day to, to, to talk to her. They weren't allowed to see her. Uh, I talked to her a couple of weeks ago. I haven't talked to her in that time. Uh, Mary is uh, beginning uh, rehab again, uh, starting from scratch. She still is in the nursing home there in Georgetown. Um, she's doing as well as can be expected, uh, being in a nursing facility. Her stroke was January of last year, or J January of this year. So it's hard to imagine that she has been down now for 10 months. Uh, but she, she's, she's doing okay. She's doing okay. Uh, still not walking, still not able to really stand and get around herself. She's still confined to a wheelchair. Father, there is one other thing. Fortunately now, her family can visit her uh, through the window. There's a window arrangement. So she can see some of her family now. Can't have any physical contact with them, of right. course. But that's a step up, and her spirit seemed pretty good when we spoke to her last week. That's good. Right. I have a question or uh, something. We have the new forward day by days for that start in November, December, and January. They're in the office. I haven't brought them out, but I think if somebody wants one and they just stop by the office, we can distribute them. I don't know what okay. the guy. Yeah, that, that's a good point. We've been asked through the diocese and instructed basically through the diocese not to have any paper, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's why the prayer books, the Bibles, the hymnals, right. all of those are out of the uh, out of the pew racks. The rack that we had in the back with different uh, flyers and so forth, they've all been removed. Mm -hmm. uh, the four day by days, they're in the church office. Please stop by and pick one up uh, because it is a good source of inspirational reading each day. Uh, or evening, whichever floats your boat. Uh, but uh, again, I would encourage everyone to, to get in and take one home. As I encourage folks with the bulletins that you have, take them home.
Don't be concerned with putting them in the trash can in the back. Take them home. The readings that we had, read through them this week. Just because we heard them this morning doesn't mean that you can't study them and ponder them, if you will. Um, so again, forward day by days, they will be in the office. Are there any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our uh, offertory hymn is hymn number 189, 189.
to proclaim the glory of your name.
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us eat in peace. Hallelujah. Continuing together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Set us down in the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our commissioning hymn is found in your service booklet. Mm -hmm. 